Europe is the largest importer of seafood in the world, but the consumers are seldom aware of where the products specifically come from, how they are produced, and what qualities they have. The reality is that many of these products, from species like shrimp, prawns, pangasius, and tilapia, are produced by aquaculture in Asia. Increasingly, however, questions have been asked about how sustainable and ethical this trade of seafood from Asia to Europe really is. Is it creating prosperity and future hope in Asia? And is it bringing gastronomic pleasure and nutritious health to Europe? Well, OK, so then we have... Uh... In response to these questions, the European Commission has instigated a research project titled Sustaining Ethical Aquaculture Trade, or SEAT. This project seeks to unpack and compare the trade of aquaculture products between Asia and Europe. And we want to do this both from the perspective of the Asian producer and from the perspective of the European consumers. So, but first we have a look at the European consumer. And then we ask a number of questions, like what do the consumers actually know about the products that they buy? What are the key attributes that they're looking for in the products that they buy? Or do the consumers actually care about issues like environmental sustainability, animal welfare, or fair trade? Or is perhaps price the overriding concern of all this? The patterns of consumption and eating habits in Europe are shaped by a fast-changing social reality. Where 50 years ago we saw dad at work and mum at home with the kids, today we see both parents at work or families split by divorce. At the same time, many Europeans are becoming more metropolitan in their tastes, at least in part due to the increasing ethnic diversity within Europe. Traditional European cuisine is still important, but people look to alternatives, going out to Mexican or Indian restaurants, or cooking Chinese, Thai or Vietnamese at home. Furthermore, consumers are influenced by all of the information that floods them via newspapers, TV and the Internet. Every day, Europeans are told about new science that tells them what to eat. Finally, consumption patterns are affected by the kinds of technology available. Many households now own freezers, microwaves and other appliances, which change the way consumers buy, store, prepare and eat food products, allowing them to buy food for the whole week, freeze it and defrost it for each day's meal. The trend has shown that uh, Europeans are eating more and more fish and there's a bigger demand of special products so that we can't, so we don't have in Europe, especially when it comes to tuna, shrimps, uh, scampi. And, uh, so it's more and more trendy to eat different types of fish as well that we can't produce, we don't have in the cold waters of Europe, so that we have to import from Asia, Australia and so on. Owing to the high perishability of seafood products, much of them are brought to Europe frozen, with these products progressively more processed into convenient, easy to prepare forms like fish sticks, fish burgers or other added value products. A lot of this processing is done in Asia, so that the products arrive by ship in Europe, ready to be eaten. These processed products find their way to European consumers via many different channels. Via the food service sector, from restaurants to school cafeterias, and via the retail sector, where supermarkets are the most important outlet for buying seafood to eat at home. It is against this background that the European consumer goes shopping for seafood for dinner. But what makes a consumer decide to choose seafood over other alternatives. I need some light food for a reasonable price. And uh, of course it should be healthy too, and the children should like it. Um, 
But in the weekends, I have more time to make some more demanding dishes. What we typically see from European studies on this is that um, the decisions what kind of seafood to buy is actually steered by 10 key attributes. One of these attributes is price. While many consumers favour seafood, there is a perception that it is more expensive than alternatives like beef, pork or chicken, for example. In some European countries, this can have the effect that seafood is seen as something reserved for special meals on the weekend or to be ordered at the restaurant. European consumers tend to think about seafood as healthy and nutritious. In fact, a Euro recent European survey showed that one in four consumers consider seafood part of a healthy diet. And also doctors tell the consumers, we are the media, that one should have seafood once or twice a week. So healthy diet and lifestyle are important for European consumers. Consumers choose whether or not to eat seafood according to its sensory attributes. Its taste, smell, appearance and texture in the mouth. This is of course very personal, with some consumers loving the taste, while others do not like seafood at all, complaining about the at times strong flavour, the bones or the smell of fish through the house after cooking it. What we see is that older consumers tend to, in general, enjoy seafood more than young consumers. Across all consumer groups, however, we see a preference for seafood that is quick and convenient to prepare. Well, time is important. I can't spend hours preparing the dinner. I have a job to do as well. But sometimes the dinner is the only time when we can gather the whole family and talk to the children. So it should be pleasant too. Consumers decide what to buy for dinner according to whom they are going to share their meal with. So mum and dad can feel a pressure to provide healthy food. But on the other hand, they can feel an equally strong pressure from the children not to buy seafood because it smells and it has a special taste. This is often a good compromise with the children. Consumption of seafood is dependent on how full a consumer likes to feel after their dinner. For some, particularly men, there is a desire to feel completely full. These consumers may prefer heavier meats like beef or pork. Others, particularly women, do not like this full feeling or think it unhealthy. It took me some time to convince my husband that, that seafood is a full dinner. Beyond these six criteria, the safety of the food is a very important concern of the European consumers. This has been brought about by a number of European food scares, as they were called. So the safety of the seafood product is a very important concern for the consumer. Now, but this much said, you have to remember that seafood in general is perceived as a safer product than many others. Europeans in general are very slack on when it comes to fish quality. They're more interested in the label, uh, what type of fish. Uh, like they'll ask the fishmonger if they have a fishmonger. But that's the best way to do it. But generally, it's all all about the price as well. And um, normal Europeans does not, don't actually have the right. They think a bit more about the price than the quality of the fish. Uh, Europeans are very negative when it comes to, not very negative, but a bit negative when it comes to aquaculture because of uh, the pictures that you see when it comes to the farm fish and 2,000 fish in one litre barrel. With Europeans demonstrating a low knowledge of aquaculture production, consumers tend to draw on their emotions and ideas of what aquaculture is to them. 
They connect aquaculture with farming practices in Europe, with pigs, cows and chickens kept in very confined and uncomfortable conditions. Natural animal behavior is restricted and this has also consequences for the quality of the product. Growing segments of particularly younger European consumers are basing their decisions on what to eat on their political beliefs, so-called political consumerism. These consumers see their decision at the cashier as having one small influence on global issues that are important to them, like animal welfare, environmental sustainability or fair trade. They are prepared to pay more for a seafood product if they know that the fish has not been subject to any unnecessary pain or suffering, that its production has not led to ill effects on environmental health, and that those producing the seafood have good working conditions and adequate pay. Indeed, we see that these consumer groups place more importance on their ethical concerns than other important attributes like price or convenience, for example. Indeed, it is with ethical concerns in focus that international organizations and research projects like SEAT have uh, or are making an effort to produce standards and labels for the seafood products that are traded so that consumers can have trust and confidence in the quality and the ethics of the products that they buy. See it project believes in that an aquaculture ethical trade index will be able to on the one hand take care of prosperity, wealth and a good development in the Asian producing countries but on the other hand also taking care of um, the concerns, the ethical concerns of the Europe European consumers. <laughs>